Hey there friends, Joy here with SubRosaTea.com. Welcome to Tea Time on Tuesdays at 2. Today's topic, of course, with July 4th this weekend, the topic is red, white, and bloom. Absolutely. I've got my favorite dress on. I've got my hair done because I am excited about what is coming up this weekend and all the opportunities that tea actually do play a really good part in it. So we're going to get to steeping up some blooming tea first, and then I'm going to do a deep dive into all the great health benefits of blooming tea. You're not going to want to miss this one. So first, let's talk about it. Let's talk about blooming tea. I'm going to uh, put our blooming tea pod right into our glass tea pot, and I'm going to pour boiling water over it. I'm going to check out the camera angles as soon as I get the water in to kind of see what you guys can see, because I don't want you to miss any part of this, okay? I think I am. I think I'm going to prop it up a little bit. You can see me, but I don't think you can see the teapot really well. So I have got my favorite big old stock pot. I'm going to very carefully transfer my teapot up a little higher so you guys can see it. So anyway, friends, if you are new to Sub Rosa Tea, welcome. Welcome. If this is one of the first times you're watching a video, make sure you leave me a comment. Hi, Debbie. Thanks for tuning in for tea time today. So first of all, if you didn't really get a good look at it, let me show you what a blooming tea looks like. Look at this. I'm going to bring it up to the camera so it can focus. Don't uh, don't look at my homemade manicure too closely. But friends, this is a blooming tea. I've got light sources from behind the camera and down below. So I'm hoping you can see it. A blooming tea pod is made with green and white tea leaves. So that's what you're actually looking at. And this is around an edible flower. So I just poured boiling hot water over my pod and I'm going to put it in the teapot and in just a second, literally a few minutes, you're going to be able to see what's happening. We are already rocking and rolling. Can you see it? It's already doubled in size and I'll bring it back up to the camera in just a few minutes. So red, white, and bloom. So many fabulous health benefits to these blooming teas. So in addition to the green and white tea leaves, inside is an edible flower that has heart healthy benefits. And if you didn't know, green and white tea leaves are full of antioxidants, but they're low in caffeine, which makes this a really enjoyable beverage that you can have just about any time of day. So for those of you who are new, we sell approximately a dozen flavors of blooming tea. The one that I grabbed for today's video is the pomegranate. So it's absolutely already super, super beautiful. Let me take off the lid just to see if you can see it any better. I'm trying to get all the good camera angles here. Can you guys see it? It's huge. I just love it. So it's got this one that I grabbed is the pomegranate flavor, but in addition to fruit flavors, we also have floral flavors, and we also have vanilla. So if fruity and floral is not for you, we even have a vanilla one. But I've got to tell you why you need to drink this, okay? I really do. There is actually five wonderful health benefits that you're going to get from drinking blooming tea. So one of them, tea in general, it does help fight the cold and flu virus. It's true. So you need about three cups of tea a day and that will help you dramatically help your body's natural healing properties by providing immune boosting properties to help the body along with the antioxidants that help fight infection and free radicals. It's true. Now, blooming tea, this specific type of tea, is also known to be a great stress buster. Raise your hand, smash that heart right now. Friends, are you suffering from stress right now? I think all of us do, whether it's mental or physical stress, at least a little bit. When stress, when we experience stress, it kind of causes a little bit of damage to our bodies and we want to be able to bounce back and react. Tea can actually help with that. So what makes this green tea so exceptional, it helps to reduce 
anxiety. Isn't that interesting? It's packed with amino acids, one specific amino acid that's specifically called L-thionine. L-thionine is highly effective at fighting stress and elevated levels of cortisol. Cortisol is a hormone. We're not really in charge of how our bodies react, are we? We're not in charge of how we feel about certain things, about those hormones being released, but we can be in control of what we drink on a regular basis. So adding tea definitely helps. So what I recommend is steeping up some blooming tea in the morning to give you that zen effect for the rest of your day. Who's ready for number three? Oh guys, can you tell I'm in my 40s? I'm not young anymore. I am already suffering from joint pain. But I gotta tell you, in my opinion, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I still have full range of mobility. I can get out and do absolutely everything I want to do. Eh, what's a little pain? Do we have to live with it? This girl says no. We can do something about it. Green tea, blooming tea, is actually known to be good to fight the effects of joint pain. Green tea actually is highly alkanized and it's the way it affects the body to fight inflammation and joint pain. Isn't that wonderful? Hey there, Steve and Penny. I don't know which one of you is watching, but I love that you love blooming tea. Thanks for watching the video today. So something that you want to consider is your post-workout regimen. If you are someone who has been taking morning walks, you're doing morning gardening, where you're down, you're bending down, crouching down to do your gardening, you might be suffering from some joint pain. Again, adding the green leaves, the green tea leaves, the blooming tea directly after your workout should have a very beneficial effect on your joints. So one of the great things about this is you can even add tea to your morning smoothie. So you don't have to drink your breakfast and a cup of tea. You can blend them together. Any recipe that you have for water, you definitely replace that with freshly steeped loose leaf or blooming tea. Let's pop in to the blooming tea. Look at this, guys. Again, friends, this is the flavor pomegranate. So you're going to see a beautiful pink flower in the center. And can you tell that the water is already steeped? It's already making green tea. I started the video about 10 minutes ago. So this is actually fully steeped. The bud is being a little shy, let me just put my tablespoon in to kind of shove it closer to the camera. No need to actually poke it or stir it. It's just I wanted to make sure that you could see it really well. This particular teapot that I'm using, we do sell them. This one is called our bamboo glass teapot. You're going to find it on the Blooming Tea page. But let's get back to some of those health benefits. So I also wanted to make sure that you knew that these pods they can be sealed in an airtight container and used over again within about 48 hours, okay? But I've got a different way that I do it myself. I'm going to tell you why. I love this tea and I think it is flavorful and very strong. It is strong enough to be steeped multiple times. So when I am done blooming, that I'm done steeping this tea, I'm gonna pour the liquid out into my big glass pitcher and I'm gonna put more boiling water over it. I'm going to steep this bloom four more times. So one pod, where'd my rose go? Oh, there's my other pod. This is the this is what the pod starts like. So one pod actually yields 16 cups of tea. Now I love the flavor when the first steep is all mixed with the second, third, and fourth infusion. So that's why I tend to steep it the way it is and then pour it out into a glass pitcher or jug. My also my personal preference is room temperature. I know that sounds a little crazy. I love iced tea. I love hot tea. There is something about lukewarm tea that is not my jam except for blooming tea. Blooming tea, I think, is spot on perfect for room temperature tea. So give it a try. It might be for you, who knows? Give it a try. Anyway, one of the other reasons I love to have this blooming tea on hand all the time is another health benefit is for upset 
tummies. Do you suffer from an upset tummy? I don't always, but I gotta tell you, some of my favorite summertime treats grow in the garden and they're high in acid. And I can get an acidic tummy. I can get some tummy troubles. Blooming tea is a girl's best friend when it comes to that. So we're under, when we are under stress, it interrupts your digestive system's natural function. So the blooming tea actually um, calms down the reaction. Does that make sense? It calms your nerves down and regulates digestion, which is how it can help you if you have an upset tummy. I love that it has that ability. Again, it's because it is full of those alkalining benefits and it reduces the acidity in your stomach and improves your digestion. Yay! Another fun fact, not something that I suffer from, but blooming tea is known to help if you have a toothache. That's also kind of good to know. Again, I'm in my 40s. I don't really suffer from toothaches but I do have little kids in my life and you know they're always growing and some of them do have sensitive teeth as they are growing those teeth in. It's just one of those things. So green tea actually contains anti-inflammatory properties called catechins. They're a very specific type of polyphenol that can help treat infections and inflammation. So even though I wouldn't call it a dangerous thing for little kids to have their teeth being grown in, but technically there's pain involved because of inflammation and green tea can help with that. So a cup of blooming tea has got all of these wonderful, wonderful benefits. So like I said, we sell 12 of these flavors and all of the flowers involved are different. So some of them, we use rose, lily, and chrysanthemum. It's so funny. I can see the blooming tea just fine, but I don't know if you guys can because I block the camera view as soon as I bring the teapot up. Now, this teapot does make four cups, and I think if I saw a, a question was asked, do you only use the boiling water with the blooming tea. Yes, you do use blooming tea. That's how it's going to steep and bloom properly for you. It will not do that if you use cold water, but if you are an iced tea lover, you can absolutely enjoy it over ice. That is completely your choice. It does need at least four cups of water to steep properly for a good cup of tea to be your end result. But we have got a really interesting option at Sub Rosa Tea, and I love it for multiple reasons. Again, I'm going to put this on my stock pot just so you can see it better. We started carrying these insulated glass mugs. Can you tell? This is significantly smaller than the bamboo blooming teapot. It does have a bamboo lid. It's just gorgeous. It does have an infuser basket for loose sleeve tea, but if you're making blooming tea, this would be the way to go. Remove the infuser basket, put the pod into the glass and pour hot water over. Now this yielding end result, friends, is going to be concentrated. Can you think of a good reason why we would want concentrated tea? I can, absolutely. Again, the whole topic of this uh, video is red, white, and bloom because there's a holiday coming up. There's a holiday coming up. July 4th is definitely a great reason to celebrate and it doesn't have to be boring. So you can make blooming tea cocktails in this mug very easily. So you're blooming your tea extra concentrated in this mug. I'd probably put the lid on for just a few minutes to bloom it up and then you could add something fun to it. We have, I think my favorite, favorite recipe right now is our peach blooming tea, adding a little bourbon. Oh yes, you definitely can. You can make a cocktail, but only if you're over 21. You know who you are. So we sell these as well if you are interested. Let's see, anybody else have any questions while I'm here? Friends, I've got one more tip for you. If you're still watching today's video, 
if you are craving something to do with the littles in your life, I am going to give you a quick tip. You can actually do this yourself. It might not taste exactly the same as what we make here at Sub Rosa Tea, but let's do a craft with the little kids. Nowadays, in the lettuce section at most grocery stores, you can find whole, huge dandelion leaves. And some of them actually come with the flowers. Totally edible. Dandelion tea leaves actually have an awful lot of health benefits. And I don't think they taste exactly what you might think. They're not bitter. They're very quite nice. So you can cut off the dandelion flower. You can use the dandelion leaves to tie it around the flower, use kitchen twine, and let the entire thing dry. You will yield a pod like this. It might take a few weeks to dry, but do you have time on your hands? I know I do. And when it's talking about crafts, it's just kind of interesting, right? Something drying in the corner of your kitchen that you can talk about with your children, something fun for them to do. And when it's completely dry, go ahead and put it right in a mug with hot water. And yes, it's absolutely consumable because you made it yourself. You know what the ingredients are. I bet you could even find some food flavorings if you wanted to, or some fruit juice to zhuzh it up a little bit but it could be a really easy, fun craft for you to do with the littles in your life who love tea as much as I do. So thank you, friends. Thank you for watching today's Tea Time on Tuesday at 2, and I hope to see you again next week for another Tea Time topic. No matter what you do with the rest of your day, have yourself a cup of tea and take care of you. Bye-bye, friends.